Okay, we're live. Dennis, welcome to the show. Psyched to have you on. Nick, appreciate your invitation. I'm always happy to be interviewed by someone who's so helpful for the community. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for sure. So what you've got is a tool for Helium. Um, and I'd like to get to that tool. We'll, we'll definitely get to that and also the future. But I'd like to start mm -hmm. with you. Kind of, Can you give me some background on how you A, found Helium and how you got to have the skills that you have in order to do what you're doing with Helium Tracker? Of course, of course. So, um, so we have to start a little bit in the back, like twenty years ago. I'm a web developer or software developer since my yeah almost my childhood, but at least my teenage years. So, uh, I've been a web developer for more than twenty years. I was in the game when in the early two thousand when everything got crazy, and I was like seventeen, eighteen years old, having my first uh, web projects in this uh, area. Um, in the past years, I've been I've made another journey to um, fulfill a childhood dream. I always wanted to have my own uh, computer simulation game when I was a, really a, a teenager. Okay. And yeah, I fulfilled this dream in the past years, founding a software development company. But yeah, to make it short, this company was not that successful as it had should be. <laughs> so this sure. uh, uh, company almost does not exist anymore. Yeah, and then... With a friend of mine, he told me about Helium at the beginning of the year. And yeah, that changed everything for me, just starting as a hobby with some hotspots for myself. And then, yeah, because I was owning those hotspots and needed some tools for it, um, and I am a web developer, I had to develop something. And it was only for myself at first, but then I um, decided to make it public at some point, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's been a really interesting thing to watch in the Helium space is that on the Helium side, the, the team has basically said, we are going to provide an excellent product in the form of hotspots in a network that generally works. We're not going to do anything else. If you want to see what the data looks like, if you want to manage your fleet, if you want to figure out how your hotspots are doing, like not our, not our thing, that's, that's on you. So it, it's really cool. Uh, at first, it's really frustrating because we're all used to kind of Apple and everything working in an entire ecosystem. But it's really cool for the rest of the world in that everybody else can kind of, uh, yeah, do something super cool within the system and, and start a little business or or at least have a, a side hustle. So I'm glad you found it. You said start of the year, we're, in, we're at the end of 2021 right now. So you found these in January 2021, something like that, 11, 12 months ago? Uh, the, this uh, This project? Yeah, helium. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I actually, I started it. I got my first hotspots at the end of April or something. Oh, okay. uh, there's those crazy times where you were earning like 10 H and D per for a standard machine. Yeah. Um, and then I started developing, and the first version was live in May or something like that. So okay. I've been a little bit late to the game. Everybody's late to the game when he started. Uh, when he starts, but yeah, yeah. But uh, the, the thing about uh, you said frustrating. Uh, I think it was very smart of the Helium team because they made everything open source and on the blockchain. This is the smartest thing you can do. Just they have uh, ex excellent developers. You can always see that beside the problem, the growth of the network brings. They are really managing to to handle it all, and it's it's really really smart to make it all open source so other developers on the world can build their tools on it or uh, use their API services and and whatever. So. It's very, yeah. really cool. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really interesting because I'm not a computer dude. I'm not like a code guy. I don't understand. I was, before I found Helium, I was very happy when I could make uh, letters bold on the internet. That was like my, <laughs> my thing. So it's it's really interesting to see this project grow and to approach it in that way where they're saying we're going to provide this core competency and the world can do everything else. And it's going to be so good that people are going to run in and help out and kind of see how there's this. I mean, what the Helium team is world class at is, is aligning incentives so that everyone's moving in the same direction. Okay. So that's how you came to it. You'd been doing software forever. That's your thing. You found Helium. Like everyone, you get fascinated with it. Uh, in the early days, yeah. you're making a, a ton. And then you see this need. Walk me through what the need was and how you fixed it. Well, how actually... I didn't make a ton because when I ordered my hotspots, I ordered them in April, then you know you will get them in August or September. So yeah. I couldn't wait. So I, I went to eBay and bought hotspots for really, really crazy. Okay, we have crazy prices now, but in back in April or May, we had really, really, really pr crazy prices. Yeah. And 
I, I don't I, I don't want to tell anybody how much I paid for my first hotspot, but I wanted to have it. And I was driving like, uh, I started two, uh, two o'clock in the night, driving 300 kilometers all through Germany, meeting someone uh, next to the highway and giving him some money and some bitcoins felt like, like criminal, like being criminal. Yeah. But I was so over fascinating with this topic and... As everybody at the start, you deploy this, this this device. Actually, I returned early in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. The sun was just rising. Yep. I just returned from my hotspot buying trip, and I needed I I needed sleep. But the more important, I need to set up this device. Yep, <laughs> and yep. then I got addicted. And I think many people know this. When you have your first device set up, you just want to know well. First, what is a witness? What is a beacon? What is it doing? Why is it doing something? Why is it not receiving this one? Why is it not receiving this one? So my first days with the first hotspot um, were just like checking the Helium app and swapping over to the Explorer uh, tab, hitting activity. And so I knew uh, what my hotspot was doing. Yep. It was all fine with one hotspot, but... Yeah, I was addicted, so I had soon had three hotspots in my network, and it, things are getting more complicated. Always opening the app, switching to the Explorer, switching to the Activity tab. Sometimes the app is overloaded because of the uh, API usage and something like that. So that was uh, the reason for me. I had just was like just a weekend project at first, just for myself. Sure. I just wanted to show. I saw that the Helium network was offering a public API. And I saw, okay, that's easy. So I just created a small database for my own five hotspots I own. And I also create a small database for the contacts where I deploy those hotspots because mm -hmm. I want to manage the payments. To be honest, at this time, I didn't know that there were other products existing sure. doing something like that because I just didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah. So I built this for myself. And yeah, it was a really uh, early prototype. It's just like to be a little bit more technical. I just had a database of 10 hotspots and a cron job, a background job, checking all those hotspots every five minutes. And every time then that there was a new activity, I had some uh, push notifications uh, in, in my, uh, my project. Um, so I got a push notification inside the browser and I put some uh, fancy sounds on it and a fancy ka sound every time when I receive helium. <laughs> and the, the cool thing is I just... I just had to to watch uh, the um, the app all the time, not like twenty times a day, but only five times a day, and just had to leave my uh, my notebook open, uh, leave the helium tracker open in a browser tab, and listen to the sound. And I always like, you know, okay, there's another witness. Okay, <laughs> so that was the main reason for me developing this. Yeah, so the only so and this is always. I've been a lot of pro I've done a lot of projects in my life mm -hmm. and the real successful and nice projects are always those you're passionate about and I think this is this is a main ingredient for success in my opinion I hope yeah, so of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you don't care about it then uh, it's, it's pretty hard to do a good job no so when you when you care deeply it's it's actually really easy to do a good job it's all the all the usual stuff about loving your work okay so you find it, you build a little program for yourself, you, you start running uh, cron jobs, which are for the non-technical people. It's just like a, a little piece of code that says, hey, do this thing every five minutes. Whatever. Every minute, yeah. yeah. Every minute, every five. Now, were you yeah. were you pulling from uh, Helium's, what is it, ETL? Or were you doing your own stuff? Like, how were you managing that, that stuff? Is yeah, that that's, that's also a nice story because uh, the original approach I have planned in April and May uh, for just my five or 10 hotspots works fine for 10 hotspots, right. but you will never be able to pull the data of 400,000 hotspots uh, over the Helium RP every five minutes. It's just not doable. Right. So I realized this when a few more people started using the project. I, I just made a post on Reddit for some early beta users. Uh, so I had like 200 users or something. And mm -hmm. the first 200 users were the best. So yeah. <laughs> everyone got so just, just nice. Um, and then when they began to add their hotspots, I added a feature that um, adds the neighborhood. So when your hotspot is witnessing anything, the witness, the beaconing hotspot will also add it to my database. So from one day to another, my database with 100 or 200 hotspots began growing to 
put all the neighboring hotspots hotspots inside. Yep. Yeah, and this was the first downtime of this project because sure. after two days, uh, the 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 workers that I developed my my complete concept was not working anymore. Right. So, so I I was sitting there and that had two two options. I I quit this project that I've invested. Yeah. Okay. Like. I don't know, maybe 50 labor hours or something, or maybe 100, but right. in my free time. So I could throw it all away and forget about it, but I was still so excited about it. And I still, yeah, it's, it's a special relationship sometimes to some sort of project. So I decided to throw it all away and begin from scratch. And then I started, I, I was using the Helium API servers before, mm -hmm. but I was checking every hotspot on its own. So, and then I started to not check all the hotspots, but check the blockchain transactions. So I was not using reading the blockchain with my own ETL in, uh, since that time. Uh, I was st still relying on the API of, of Helium. But instead of asking every hotspot what's, what's happened, I, was, I would just read the blockchain, go through all the transactions on the blockchain and put this into my database. So this was the first step to uh, be, being able to, to just handle uh, this amount of data. Yeah, and I mean, you really have to have an idea for, for architecture of systems on this because I think, you know, conceptually or at the big picture, I think we all get this idea that there's this kind of main trunk of information. And if everyone is constantly asking that trunk for information, like it just gets bogged down. There's there's only so much yeah. it can do. But to actually understand how that works or the details of it or the, the architecture, the functionality is, yeah, it requires some specialized knowledge. So you figured out kind of how you needed to do that. And then what was the next step from there? Well, the next step was we all experienced the overloaded API in the past six weeks or eight weeks or two or three months or something like that. That's the reason is we have only one API from Helium, but they have plenty of servers. It's not only uh, handled by one uh, web server, but still every user of the hotspot a uh, hotspot helium hotspot app every user on the explorer every user in the system and like four five hundred thousand people are using this single data source so it was it has been overloaded a, a few weeks ago which made our service um unreliable too because mm -hmm. if the helium api does not get any new data or we cannot reach the api yep. we don't get uh, any data either so Actually, I get a, get a little tips from the from other community developers, from other um, community projects, um, and they uh, advised me to install my own uh, Helium ETL, so my own um, server that is connected to the blockchain, the same yeah. way as a Helium hotspot, um, and is is uh, writing this data to my database. So I have a copy of the uh, Helium API on my own server. And so now I can on, uh, always rely on, on this server. And if my server is behind the blockchain, which can sometimes happen, I can fall back to the, to the, to the Helium API. So. Ah, interesting. Okay, so you can, you can kind of have the best of both worlds. Now, yeah. it's, it's a pretty big deal if I'm understanding it right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But to have, have your own, is it copy of the ETL, your own ETL? I'm not sure the, the, the wording. But it's a pretty big deal to have that, right? Uh, well, if you understood how it works, it is. It takes you like so. I can do it in in twelve hours from zero to a fully synced working ETL now. So okay. if I just order a server now and set up the ETL, I will have it running in let's say sixteen hours. But this knowledge took me two months <laughs> to learn because my. Uh, first attempt to install, just installing the ETL, I just ordered a dedicated server, just the empty Linux Ubuntu server, installed everything. The tutorial is quite easy. It's a job of 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Right. So, And then I had my empty ETL running and starting with block zero. <laughs> block zero of 1.4 million. Right. I don't know where we are right now. So, um, And I thought, okay, I have this ETL running and I know when I get a hotspot from scratch, it takes like two days to sync or something like that. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, then let just let it running, let it, let it run this ETL, let it just sync and come back in a few days. And yeah, I came back after two days and was at block thousand or something. <laughs> so I thought, okay, it was wrong. So um, the trick is you just need the proper hardware. You cannot 
uh, uh, have a 50 euros or 50 dollars per month small server. You need a very large SSD. You need like, I don't know, 1.5 terabyte of uh, fast storage. So you cannot use a normal, a normal SSD. You have to have some, you have to really have a power machine. Mm -hmm. And the first three attempts I was, um, I didn't want to spend too much money at the first because those power machines are like five times the price of a cheap server. So, so just the, the, the ratio. So I tried it with a cheap server and I tried it with a little more expensive one and I failed three or four times. But now I know how it works and we are uh, also setting up a second ETL uh, within the next weeks just to have a second fallback. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's, there's another thing. Um, You might have seen in the Helium Explorer that for some hotspots, the uh, online status and the sync status, there's uh, something like uh, last update five yep. days ago, three yep. days ago, oh, yeah. two days ago. Yep. So um, this is caused by, as far as I know, I'm not an expert for everything, but from my, my knowledge, as far as I know, um, this is caused by a bug in the peer-to-peer -peer library everything is using. And for that reason, Many ETLs or Helium hotspots or blockchain nodes don't know the whole network in their peer book. They have something like a peer book, but they only know like, I think we are at 30, 40% right now. Yep. And six weeks ago, we were like 10%. Right. So right. the Helium APIs, the Helium ETL of the official Helium team didn't, yep. doesn't also know every hotspot. And so they cannot get the... Um, Uh, listen address and the uh, sync data. Yep. They have to have a connection. So, and if we are using multiple data sources, the uh, chance is higher that one of the data, data sources we are asking for a specific hotspot has information, has a connection to this hotspot. Mm -hmm. So, to get this hotspot guard, we're coming to this later function more reliable. Yeah. Okay. So, that's it's go, going into the weeds a little bit, but there is this kind of background to all of these services, whether it's yours or, or any of the other ones, where from from my perspective is more or less a kind of coding outsider or software outsider, is it looks like having your own copy of the ETL is that's the that's the bar. You have to have that in order to have a functioning service. Well we have it since two months, running since two months. And so we could live before it, but yeah, when the Helium API is down You will be down too, and you are. You might be one of the causes that the Helium API is down. Right, because you're pulling so, so much. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not. It's not a, a little. So when we started, we're doing like ten or twenty thousand requests to the API a day. You're Today, the you're the reason it broke, dude. Dennis, yeah, come on. <laughs> not not me only. I when it when it was down, I I, I really I stopped my services. I stopped yeah. my complete services for for a few hours just to see if I might be the problem because yeah. you can you never know. Sure. But uh, I don't I don't think so. We're just pulling the blocks and we don't have to ask every hotspot. So we're just reading every block. So one request every minute, more or less. Right, every 72 seconds or whatever it is now, whatever the, the speed yeah. is. Okay, cool. Should be so, 60 seconds, yeah. Yeah, should be 60, but uh, it is where it is. All right, so that's kind of all the background, how you got into it, kind of some of the geeky stuff. We, I probably should have started this at the beginning, is what the <laughs> heck is this tool? What does it do? Um, I think we talked yeah, a little we... bit about hotspot management, but walk me through what it is and, and what it does and... Yeah, yeah maybe I just show it to you. Totally. I have, yeah, I don't know. I would just share my screen. Hopefully it works. Oh, there, yeah. There we go. Sweet. Okay. So this is Helium Tracker. This is uh, how it looked when you started. And yep. yeah, uh, you, you need sunglasses for that. So I the do, first yeah, yeah. request was uh, like adding a dark mode. I've just uh, created a simple account, an empty account, just to, to, to show up how everything uh, is, is working. And yeah, the first thing you can and should do when you have a registered account, registration is only uh, email address and two times your password. That's everything uh, we need to know. Yeah. Um, you can start your uh, 48 hour trial. So you get um, the advantage of all the premium features we have. We can talk about this later. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you really want? Yeah, I want. I want. Yeah, so <laughs> your account, yeah, well, <laughs> your account will be immediately upgraded when the server uh, does response. So it did re respond. So now I have to, two days of the uh, professional account. It's, it just um, gives me 
the ability to add more hotspots to my wallet. Mm -hmm. um, I think the free limit is three hotspot. Will most of the people uh, will be, will be enough for most of the people, and um, but also if you have three uh, hotspots and want to have a real time notification or other features, yeah, you can upgrade your account. Sure, so I just yep. so. Um, as you can see, the dashboard is quite empty, so we have nothing inside, so we will just change this and I go to wallet. Okay, and what this is, it's mainly for, is it is it for managing a fleet or is it also for finding like a good location? Like what was, what was the real pain point for you that you're trying to solve? Uh, no, it's just really uh, managing the fleet, getting yeah. all the information, the real-time notification, what are your hotspots doing right now? and uh, the commission management. So pay out your host with uh, QR codes and something like that. Yep. So um, all this uh, simulation data, how much can you earn with the hotspot is not, um, in, not, not a part of this project. Okay, you can uh, compare hotspots with other and make your own uh, guess why they are earning more, but we have, don't have a simulation or something like that. Okay, so it's, so, it's mainly management. Cool, super cool. It's, yeah, management and... Uh, and information, real-time information. So I just uh, will just add um, the Helium wallet to my account. Um, this is just the address I had just in the uh, clipboard. I have two options. I am the owner of this wallet. So if I check this, the hotspots, all the hotspots of, of this wallet will be added to my account immediately. And yeah. if you uh, um, uh, have a new hotspot onboarding, it will also be added man uh, automatically. So you don't have to... Dennis, is all of this in English? I mean, I know you're... You're German, is it? Is there a German version of this? Uh, not yet. I, I, I'm thinking of this, but most of the users are from yeah all over the world, and we have like I don't know twenty percent or fifteen percent German uh, users. But oh, sorry, we'll get back wrong to that. button. Wrong yeah, button. Most of us Americans button. only speak our own language. We're, we're terrible that yeah. way. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's not too hard to translate all this stuff. Maybe I will do it someday, but yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so I've just added this uh, hotspots to uh, uh, this wallet to my account. As you can see, I have as is eight hotspots here in, in in my list, and I have already the the income details of the past weeks, the past seven days, and whatever. And I also have a ranking. So this is a quite cool feature. Yeah. This is just uh, telling you how much. Uh, how many uh, hotspots in the world uh, just um, have a better uh, seven-day average income? Wow, that's pretty cool. So, so that one is 659. That That's pretty much in the top, geez, less than 1%, right? If there's only 659, better than... Yeah, and actually, I do. I really do own this hotspot because this hotspot we are looking at is the one I've been driving to uh, through the night in, uh, ah, in the May. Okay. So <laughs> it was a little bit, uh, well, it's a nice story. But he's living, maybe you can see it, uh, this is Bremen. We're living on the 15th floor here. I, okay. I think you can't see it because it's dark, but we have a lot of elevation here. So, yeah. So, and... Uh, cool. Good for you. So, yeah... <laughs> Is, this, I mean, the price of hotspots on eBay in June of 2021 was pretty routinely ten thousand uh, dollars. No, 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 ten. Yeah, I was shortly before this ten thousand dollar craziness. I was yeah. really shortly before that. I, I wouldn't have paid ten thousand for a hotspot, really not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but right? I had clients yeah. who were buying them. I was like, dude, just just wait a couple of weeks. But in some cases, I was wrong. If you had a great Gate spot and you were earning a ton of HT, you could pay it off in a month. I mean, it was a very yeah, different time. But I had this great spot, mm -hmm. but my city was completely under, underdeveloped mm. at this time. We had five hotspots in the city, but yeah. I know they were coming. And when they yeah. come, I will be at the top 1,000 or something. So, right. yeah, it was risky, but yeah, when you're addicted, what can you do? So, <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Uh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now that I've added um, all those hotspots, we are now having an overview, um, income overview of all these hotspots. So the past week, the today, the past 30 days and something like that. So this is just for all the hotspots on this uh, particular wallet. Mm -hmm. And so what we can, what else can, what we can do as well is just adding uh, a contact. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, just name him Nico because he's called Nico and just give him her 
So we have can add to oh, multiple so data the here. Name, email, all that stuff, and then can, you you can just add some from uh, from a text from the city, maybe or whatever you sure, want. Sure, sure. So, yeah. Dang! So can you pay, you can pay out by bank transfer. You're not. Are you limited to crypto or no? No, no. Uh, so we don't do any uh, automatic payment. So okay. if you select bank transfer, you will just have a. Uh, a form that's telling you, okay, you pay to this uh, uh, bank uh, the bank account this mm -hmm. this amount. So it helps you just calculating that. It's the oh, same okay. with so you. You kind of leave payments. the information here, and you it's easy to grab when you need it, but it's not doing it automatically yeah. yet. Yeah. So uh, we also support PayPal. So it's the same uh, oh, okay. payment uh, uh, procedure as with Helium. So we, so we generate a, a QR code for yep. PayPal payment, so you can pay with a PayPal app. As well, yeah. but the um, suggested and the uh, yeah, what it's built for is just using helium, uh, crypto, and helium. So in future, we will also add more currencies. I think the only cryptocurrency we have right now is helium, mm -hmm. but we are planning to add uh, Bitcoin as well. But Bitcoin doesn't make sense because of the uh, uh, transaction fees, but yeah, right. Tether or I don't know. So we yeah, could yeah, some usually okay. add Super cool. more of the. So as you can see, we already have every currency on the world so we can just have some calculations uh to the what we have currency. and then how is it how is it calculating that like where are you pulling that information from uh which information the currencies yeah like when no when you're when you're saying how much to pay out if it earned 10 hnt that month is is there a like a translation of that hnt to local currency in here or is that something else or you like do that on your own uh, sorry, I just had this ka sound. It was very loud. You'd have to <laughs> repeat it again. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. So in, in the in the app, if someone is getting paid in whatever, in fiat currency or or you're mm -hmm. paying out in, in dollars, how where is the information coming from for the HNT price in dollars? Okay. So it's actually the um the uh, another ka -ching. I like it, but I don't coming, like it. Right? Yeah, but I have to go to the settings and but make the, uh, I first have to answer the question. So actually, we are calculating the um, the amount of HNT and uh, the value of HNT at the time of the payout. So this is the current version. And is that just we from are, the Oracle price, or is that some other where? Yeah, this is the Oracle price. This is the price uh, we have uh, right here. Got I don't it. know what's wrong with my mouse cursor. Something is completely wrong here. No, uh -oh. I don't know. Um, so I just have to change the volume so I can hear you when you say something. <laughs> sure. So okay, okay. And that that ka ching that's coming from every time a witness event happens or a beacon or an earning or like how Well, this was a reward block, it was an earning, so then there comes a ka ching sound and when the witness happens there comes like a <laughs> something like that. <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. And I just uh, added a, a pings check service which is not live yet. And yep. this gives gives you a, like a sound of a of a U boat, a sonar sound. Mm -hmm. I hope it's the correct uh, yep. word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I just uh, create uh, this contact Nico, um, and what I want to do is I have placed some hotspots at his place, and I just create a commission. So I just I'm, I'm in his uh, thing. I'm in his profile at this commission. So his this contact is already chosen. I chose one of the hotspots from my list. Uh, I'm saying, okay, he's getting, let's say, 20%. Mm -hmm. uh, I can also add some text for this commission. This is useful when you have like 100 contacts or something, mm -hmm. just to filter them, to, to, to search them and yep. whatever. And so would you use you that for just for cities or how would you use that? Yes, I personally use it for cities because mm -hmm. I uh, you can have a custom dashboard for the text. So I have... Uh, attack for all the uh, hotspots that are deployed in, in my hometown, for mm -hmm. example, and I have some, some hotspots deployed in the town where my girlfriend lives. So I have two tags for that and mm -hmm. I have a different, uh, different, um, different dashboards for them. So I can separate those okay. city with, with in, uh, each other. So I see which city performs the best, which has the best average income per hotspot and something like that. Interesting. And now, is that just for the hotspots in your kind of managed fleet, or is that for all hotspots in that city, or either one? Well, we have also the data for the hotspots in the city. Mm -hmm. We can, I can just show it to you. 
If I just go to a hotspot, you can just uh, uh, hit the city. Mm -hmm. And this is all public information. So we have all those hotspots here in Bremen and we can just order them by uh, which one was the most successful in the past 30 days. So I'm not on, pl pl on the first place. I'm only on the second place. Oh, dude, uh, you got knocked off by the donkey. Ah, uh, I have to bullshit. eat us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and like, let's see. Interesting. So you can see where you are in your city. And you can see, this is very interesting stuff. So this mm -hmm. is the public stuff, not related to your account, but the mm -hmm. public uh, blockchain information we have. You can just see which city is earning the most average for, um, for all, per, per hotspot. Oh, so, so globally, you can, just, you can see the, the highest earning city. Yeah, I Ooh. can have it, the seven-day average. Uh, so this, the highest seven-day average currently is this city with six oh, hotspots. Oh, I thought it was LA. All right. So where yeah. is that? So mostly these are cities that are in, in suburbs of, of big cities. They just wow. have not okay. many hotspots. So these calculations are not always right, but yeah, you can make some estimations from that. Dang. Okay, but no before American I... cities in the top ten, dude. America's got to catch up. Yeah, yeah. Germany is Germany is doing great. I, I don't know. I have no filter for the countries yet. Just okay. a reminder for myself. Okay. So back to the commission. Um, I have two options. I can set uh, the percentage in H and T, yep. or I can say he gets a, a fixed amount of mm -hmm. whatever uh, currency I choose. So I can say, okay, this one is getting not twenty percent, but he's getting five H and T because in the contract I chose H and T as a payment yep. currency. Yep. Currency. If I choose uh, US dollar or euro or whatever in the pay contract currency, it will be uh, this amount in this currency. Yep. So. What I want to do is just uh, put um, twenty percent in, and I think it was starting on June first or something like that. It doesn't have an end date time. You can set an end time when you uninstall the hotspot or right. maybe change this whatever, commission yeah. to 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 thirty percent. So you have one with an end date. Yeah, okay. Yep, that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. It, it okay. basically means you can change the change the contract if you need to. Yeah. Okay. Or change the agreement. So. Okay. When we change this, and the server does respond, yeah. So we can uh, go back to the go back to our dashboard, and now we can see. Okay, these uh, red lines here. This are the commissions we are paying. Hmm. So I just uh, I will just raise uh, raise the commission. <laughs> yeah, it's just to have a, to see it better. <laughs> yeah, sure. So we're doing like eighty percent, so we can see it better. Yeah. Okay, we cannot see it better because there's a caching issue. Mm -hmm. but it's not, it sounds so familiar. This is like, you know, as, as we all enter more and more into the internet zone, it's like oh, we have to learn all these these pieces and how, and how the whole thing works because it is yeah. it's pretty darn different. So, so now you can see this these 80% mm -hmm. and the, the uh, cool this thing is, from... Hang on a second. This mm -hmm. is 80% of the whole fleet. This is an 80%. No, no. This is 80%. The, the red one is 80% of this single hotspot right now. So the blue one is what my complete rewards are for all the hotspots. And the red one is what I'm sharing with my hosts. So, and the cool thing is for me, okay. I have this number here. And this number tells me, uh, yeah, it's just a bad, uh, there's too much caching uh, involved here. Now we have the right data. So you can see, um, the total rewards yesterday was 3.3 HNT, and I know okay, I can spend three, it's 2.9 of this, mm -hmm. um, and keep the rest for paying my commissions at the end of the month or something like that. So I have this overview how much is, yeah, how much the uh, profit is for me. Hang on, I'm not, okay. I'm not getting that. I don't know if it's a graph thing or if I'm just my math brain isn't, isn't wrapping my head around it. So when we're looking at the graph on the right, the blue and the, the orange, the blue and the red, that's representing a single hotspot or that's representing the entire fleet that you have? This is the entire fleet, these eight hotspots. If I just click on this particular hotspot, we set up the commission. I think now it's getting clearer. You can see this 80%. Got yeah. it. Okay. And what we also can do just to show it up is just create a second contact. It doesn't matter what we put inside. And add a commission for the same hotspot, maybe. Yep. Uh, was this one? Let, let's say it was five percent. 
and we keep can... those commissions low. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to keep them low. We can raise them uh, afterwards <laughs> when they complain. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, but awesome. uh, now you can see uh, the the purple one here is is eighty uh, percent commission. There's another one. Maybe he's the, he's the one who's referring this guy yep. uh, and get paid off. That get yep. paid for whatever. So yep. okay, so you can set it up however you want. Ah, super cool. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's this commission sale stuff, and I will show the payout because it's quite easy. What was, uh, um, but first I like to explain all this data. This is all yeah. the data we get from the Helium blockchain. As you can see, the online status of the ATLs that are available for us has been updated for this particular hotspot 18 year, 18 hours ago. It uh, has been an, on block height one point of this one, so it mm -hmm. has been. Uh, so this is chain. this is telling you kind of how accurate or how up to date your information is. Uh, is uh, well, uh, the um, the ETLs are changing this those information regularly for every hotspot. So mm -hmm. the ETL, the Helium ETL, or our ETL, one of them has made the last hot, uh, update for this hotspot eighteen hours ago, and at this time he was on this blockade, and the blockade at this time, the highest block we know about was this one. So you can see, okay, it was almost synced, or was like twenty blocks behind at this particular part. Okay, and so that, that pulls from like the most recent, basically version that you can find, whether it's Helium's yeah. or yours, or yeah, yeah, okay, exactly, cool. exactly, exactly, and we're really. We we think when this uh, this peer to peer bug I, I I I've mentioned earlier has been fixed, so this issue of the this issue of this long waiting times uh, should fix itself within the next weeks. So yeah, so you can also see the sinking speed. So this is just how many blocks per minute in average is your hotspot sinking? It mm -hmm. should sink almost uh, about one block per minute, or yeah, okay. seventy seconds. So yep. a little bit less. So, but when this uh, value is close to one, you know that your hotspot should be working okay. Yep. And we have also this listen address, and if it would be relayed, so we have a peer-to-peer -peer listen address here. We also had a warning um, for that too. Okay. Uh, oh, so all this, this is kind of like hotspot network health. Yeah, we call it Hotspot Guard. The hotspot Guard is just checking the state of your hotspot regularly and okay. sends you an email notification a alarm when every when anything is wrong. But to be honest, because of this issue, the data is not too accurate at the moment. And this right. is something we're just working on because there's an alternative way using the peer-to-peer -peer network of Helium to get the directly the information directly. So this is just a research topic will come in the next, I don't know, weeks or months. Okay. Weeks. Yeah. Right. Hopefully so, weeks, maybe months, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Okay. The next thing is you have some monthly reporting for your hotspot. Nothing too fancy, but you can see for this hotspot where I set up the, co com uh, com uh, the, the commissions, you can see this, this month's this Nico would get like eight HNT, the other one would get like 0.5 HNT. Mm -hmm. yep. So as a free mem member, you only have the current months for the reporting. As a, a, a paid member, you have like every month you, All the month, yeah. All you the month. demand. Okay. You can just generate a report for every every month. can download this as, a, 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 as an Excel file or even as an optimized Coinly version. The Coinly is a service for making your taxes. I think you can upload this CSV there and they uh, calculate how much taxes you have to pay. But you shouldn't okay. forget the taxes. <laughs> no, no, the government doesn't want you to forget those. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they, yeah. <laughs> They're pretty okay. excited about that, yeah. The next, uh, yeah, cool feature and key feature is the payout system. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I just create a payout, and when I create a payout, I choose the commissions that I have set up in my system. Uh, for this case, I only want to uh, use the uh, first one because I have set up a Helium wallet for him and so. And I can just do it for maybe, let's say, the last month. Yep. And just create the payout. At this time, the the data displayed here on the dashboard is the data from our database. So this is the data we've imported from the blockchain. This okay. data 
could be wrong for some reasons. Maybe we have a downtime, we've missed some blocks. or So this data, we are really trying to have it so as accurate, accurate as, as, as we can. And it is accurate at the moment, but this data could be wrong for some reasons. For security reasons, this data here in the payout um, is not calculated from our database, but it is again using the Helium blockchain ETL services we have available with the proper start and end date. Also in your time zone. So you can set up every time zone where you just so, yeah. so and this gives up uh, gives up this calculation for this month. Uh, this hotspot has a total earning of seventeen helium, and the eighty percent are just like uh, just like uh, just this fourteen yep. uh, HNT. And yep. yeah, then you can just simply scan this Q QR code, um, and uh, the host will be paid, and the system will also track this payment, of course. Um, yeah, and. And then can you make notes on that payment or, or sorry, can you make notes on that payment? Is that what that bottom box is for? Is there for, is that uh, no, this bottom box is, this is still missing. This uh, I have paid the manually uh, feature. We have, mm -hmm. have it like hidden somewhere here. So you can add some memo and notes for this payment, but this feature, yeah, it, this is not perfect. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. But it's coming. Okay. I mean, that's the thing is that all of these things, this is a brand new ecosystem is that, you know, everyone participating in it is doing kind of working as hard as they can to make these things uh, good as, as quickly as I can. And, and one pretty important thing to note is we're doing this on December 22nd mm -hmm. of 2021. I'm guessing by January 15th, every Everything that you might catch in here that you're, you know, Dennis, you're like, oh my God, this is wrong now. It'll probably be fixed by January 15th. That's my guess. You know, maybe, maybe. Like developing this happening so fast. Maybe I will have some days off uh, during the uh, holidays, yeah. but no not days too long. long. <laughs> not too long. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Really Another cool long. thing. I don't know. I hope it will be working. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot only make a payment for, uh, for one month, but I can also make a payment um, for the whole uh, time that commission exists. And I can also, I have this uh, setting to subtract payments I have already made to this wallet. Ah, oh, that'd be super useful to me because I've, I've got one host where I've just been kind of slapdick about like, oh, I, I think I, I overpaid her one month and then I was waiting to catch up for three months and now it's a total pain in the butt to, to figure out yeah. what it is I owe her. But this subtracting payments thing is pretty cool. Neat. So this normally, this is a, is a real-time notification, by the way, for a beacon this hotspot just received. So yep. you can just watch it on the map and see what happens here and where what happened? Where is the beacon? So ah, it came from there. So it witnessed a beacon. All right. So and witnessing is where you earn most of your money. Interesting. No. Oh, there goes the canine alert system. Come here, buddy. Oh, you also have a dog. Yeah. Ein Hund. Ein Hund. Kleiner schwarzer Hund. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Kleiner schwarzer Hund. <laughs> <laughs> they're all, My they're dog. all around here, right? It's, they'll let My you know. My dog is sleeping. Yeah. They'll let you know when the postman's here. They're always, always interrupting my interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. So you can do the payout stuff. That's pretty cool. You can do the subtract payment stuff. I haven't seen that before. That is super cool. Eventually, you'll be able to put a, a note and a memo on there, and that's gonna that's gonna work part of the time this thing is live. What um, what else are you super pumped about on this thing? Mm, super pumped. Yeah, just the Telegram notifications is one of the recent features I have because this is we have a Telegram bot running. I can can just uh, show this. You, the only thing you have to do is visit this Telegram bot and send this command to him, and then he will automatically recognize or connect your Telegram account with yep. your Helium Tracker account. And then you can send some fancy commands to him. And the coolest thing is that he will just inform you on every activity if you want. You can disable, of course, I have disabled POC activity because it's just getting too much, but I still have... Um, uh, this, those mining uh, reward notifications. So every 30 minutes, I get a little small little notification on my mobile phone telling me how much money I made and if I can afford. <laughs> yeah, if you could buy I a coffee know, for a yourself. Ice yeah, cream yeah. or coffee or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's funny. Um, okay. And yeah, 
another upcoming feature which is still in development i have a friend of mine helping me with a mobile app and yeah so we're, we're, we're developing a mobile app for ios and android and i think windows phone and everything um yeah but this friend of mine has a full-time job and a family so it takes a little bit longer than expected i plan to release it on on uh, to, to for christmas but yeah things are as they are as they are yeah yeah <laughs> Dig it. And then what, um, Dennis, if we kind of back way out of, of just this and you look at the Helium ecosystem, I mean, you've been in it, you're, you're now a vendor um, in it or, or considered a you know, participant who you're selling a service. Where do you see uh, this project going with Helium in the future? And yeah, do you see like what? Yeah. What do you see in the future? For Helium Tracker, especially for Helium, yeah, for Helium yeah. Tracker, or for your own kind of uh, involvement in the in the whole program. Uh, I was thinking of developing my own hotspots. I was thinking of uh, developing some uh, um, really use cases for like GPS tracker for farming machines and something like that. By okay, I, I said to myself. This is what I can do. So this is my really my professional. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, we will want just want to um, continue doing developing something helpful for the helium network, helpful for the people, and help the development of this uh, cool project for the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I mean, do you do you think as you see more projects coming online, whether that's other other kind of blockchain plus meat space projects like mapping projects or other wireless projects um, that you're going to develop for those as well? Or do you, do you see yourself kind of sticking with helium? What, yeah. What do you see that that future looks like? I haven't ever thought about this, to be honest. Uh, okay. I don't know. So at the moment I am quite busy with what I'm doing. So yeah. I will keep go doing this. Um, um, maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. I mean, there's, there's so much <laughs> yeah. happening. The, the world is yeah. changing so rapidly. Yeah. In, in so we have an amazing large uh, roadmap here on Trello. It's even public. So this oh, cool. is where all the suggestions were from our Discord go. And this is all the stuff we have already implemented. And this is all the stuff we still have to implement. Okay. And okay. With, with we, I mean I. <laughs> yeah, sure. And uh, so... Yeah, I, I haven't really had the time to, to to think about the future later than three months. So because I'm yeah. busy with this for the next three months and we will see how the Helium network develops and what features come next and what. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that you think you think will happen that will change the network significantly? I think it's beyond light hotspots or maybe. How are you are you looking at the impact of light hotspots? Will that change anything for you and for Helium Tracker? Well, I'm a little bit afraid of the um, growth of the network because mm -hmm. right now we have like 400,000 hotspots. They yep. are doing like 10 transactions per day, like 4 million transactions per day in the database. And we're storing it for three months. What will happen when we have 1.5 million hotspots and we will soon have this 1.5 million or whatever number. So I'm excited for that, but I think Helium will manage this and we will also manage this uh, data amount. And yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm most excited for the time when the industrial use case of uh, the helium network starts when the real when there will be applications and will there be com companies really using this data and this yep. the times of having rewards for puc events are fine but i i'm I, i'm really curious how it will be when they are over and so the network is there now everybody can use it and i think they will use it and i think this will succeed in 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 long term and yeah yeah well, that's that's a great hope right are you yeah. seeing anything on the back end because i mean you're seeing all the customers are you seeing anyone kind of bigger come in where you're like man these guys are, are really going to actually use this network like crazy um or are you seeing mostly just uh kind of wallet wallet owners doing their thing 
You mean from the Helium Tracker accounts, I see. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Like when you're, I guess what I'm looking for is you're seeing stuff on the on the back end. Is there anything that you're seeing that really gives you kind of hope for future of the network stuff? Oh, or did I lose you? That's entirely possible. Um, well, I saw some things uh, that are not good for the network in the accounts recently. So I actually had a few accounts um, with like 2,500 2, hotspots in their wallets and in their accounts. And at first I thought, okay, that must be like the hosting services or something like that. Yeah. And I, I've been watching some of those hotspots and realized uh, those are this famous uh, spoofers. So yeah. those one who have their spoofing farm somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, now yeah. they have their, their spoofing farm 100 kilometer north of me at the northern part of Germany. All those Chinese spoofers suddenly went to Germany for some reason. And the time of this change was the PUC V11. Yeah. I don't know why they used it, but everybody was hoping this will uh, knock out the scammers, uh, the, the, the spoofers. But actually... It, from what I saw, it might have helped them somehow. It just I don't shifted know. them. Yeah. Although I, when I talked to the Helium crew, I, I think, I mean, the, the general message that I'm that I'm getting and that I think is is pretty close to correct is that you can look at a, at a specific kind of gaming ring and be like, man, they're making a lot of HNT. But overall, like the total network, the amount of the total network that is going to gaming doesn't appear to be anywhere near what it was. And it seems to be within kind of what I think of as like reasonable human limits. Like you're always going to have cheaters. You just yeah, you of course, stop of course. those people. So um, yeah, for me, it's, it's the same. When I look at my data, database, 99.99% of the users are real users with two or three hotspots. Some of them are yeah, just companies. They're doing like a real, real business. They have like 200 or 300 hotspots deployed. They have uh, own service uh, employees that go out to the people, set up uh, stuff at the location, yeah. answer all these questions to the normal people and real companies. And yeah, this is very, very exciting to seeing uh, how many um, yeah business models and companies come out of this new network. And it's, crazy, yeah, yeah. it's really, really exciting. And all the people I was talking to, they are all, yeah, just excited. It's, it's yeah, cool to be a part of this stuff. It's yeah. super cool. Yeah, yeah, super cool. And I think this this tool, HeliumTracker.io, is why is everyone doing the IO thing? What am I missing there? Is that that's just like a cool last? Yeah, it's cool. Input output. It's just a nerdy, yeah, geeky input output IO yeah. thing. So and dot com is I don't know. Maybe HeliumTracker.com. I think. Maybe I should have done gristleking.io, but I did .com. Uh, I, stayed, I stayed vanilla on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's just a fancy thing. I think it's just a blockchain yeah, yeah, it's, it's, stuff. It's signaling. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Okay, yeah, so. cool. Um, dig it. So the first, first 48 hours are free, so anyone can cruise on, check this out. Um, I would totally encourage everyone who's watching this to go on and load your hotspots in, see if you like it, see if it works for you. It looks like there's some pretty cool features in here. Um, I saw some stuff that was really cool. And then the basic stuff that you kind of all of these different apps um, need. So exciting to see another another vendor on the network rocking this out and doing a good job and, and bringing new functionality and kind of like data visualization piece to uh, to all of us. So thanks for thanks for building this, dude. <laughs> I, I really enjoy it. I, so <laughs> yeah, that that's what we want. Rip and Dennis, is there anything else that uh, that you want to throw on before we before we close this thing out? <sighs> Have I told you how much I love the Helium network and why? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, yeah, this is, this is a, la, a good last sentence because the Helium, when I got to know the Helium stuff, yeah. for me, it was the first crypto related project with a everyday real life usage, just for me personally. Yeah. I, I was always waiting for something. Cryptocurrency is cool since years. It's cool for nerds and it's cool for enthusiasts and not for the normal people, but yeah. this is something that uh, leads to more adaption. And I, I also experienced this with my friends where I hosted my hotspots. Yeah. They are all crypto nerds now. They are yeah. all having some Bitcoin here, some things out there. And yeah. this this is also something beside the uh, technical aspect of the Helium network, which just is helpful for 
cryptocurrency at all. So yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a total gateway drug. I love it. I think helium is super cool because it lets people inside and, and introduces them to this world. So yeah, dig that you're you're ending on that. All right, ripping. Thanks, Dennis. Really appreciate your time. I'll uh, I'll get this out and yeah, check out heliumtracker.io. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>